Welcome to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, in this episode, what I want to do is I, I want to break down uh, for everyone how we do planning inside of Magellan Network, my strategies and secrets uh, that I've used for uh, literally 19 years of just doing business planning for financial advisors. You know, I find a lot of times um, there's just a lot of misnomers, a lot of misinformation or lack of information on how to do a proper plan. You know, if you've come out of the large company background, uh, you were probably forced uh, to do some uh, numbers and uh, maybe a couple pager here and there, and then you just kind of file it away. Uh, or you've been off on your own, and, and quite frankly, you know, you just have maybe written some things down on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet or a notebook and, and forgotten about it. And, you know, what I've always found is that we are all business owners. We are all entrepreneurs. I do not care what your business card says, the name on it. And I believe that all of us have a fiduciary duty to have a game plan in place that sets us up to be successful. So what I want to do is I just want to take you, we just got these back from the printer uh, for 2021. So I'm pretty excited to share these with you. First off, I think with planning, you don't want to sit there and just uh, carve out a, a couple hours on a Monday, maybe January 1st, for example, and uh, and just do some goals. Now, goals are important, but they're, they tend to be in a vacuum. So let's start first off talking about what has to happen before you do the plan. You know, so what I have in front of me, for those of you watching the video, what I have here is actually our pre-work for this year. This is the 2021, or we should probably say 2020, uh, review and recap. And look. Let's face it, it's been a very, very unique year, and hopefully it's the only one uh, that we're going to have like this. But for, for example, if I said to you, give me a five-minute narrative, tell me about how you did this year, the good, the bad, the ugly, like how'd you do this year, right? You want to memorialize your successes, your failures, your obstacles everything. You want to make it part of the record. Now, what's nice about doing something like this, again, if you're if watching the video part of it is um, you save these. And then each year you have a, you can compare year to year. What's, what I like about my clients who've been with me for many, many years, if not decades, is many of them have these since the first time they've done it. And they can look back and see what their thought process was. The fact that I had somebody uh, yesterday uh, email me, hey, when I started to work with you, I had 20, uh, $22 million of, of fee-based assets. Now I'm, I'm almost at $100 million. And you can see the progression over the years of how to pull that off, right? And that's that's very, you know, we, we always like to um, kind of focus on our failures. And it's really cool to kind of, hey, look at, look at the progress that I've made. So keeping these things is super important to do. The other reason why we want to do a narrative, quite frankly, we want to make sure that things that went well, we continue to do, right? What's the old saying? Uh, it works so well, I what? I stopped doing it. So when you do a reporting narrative, again, to yourself, you now do not have the challenge. Uh, the second thing we like to do is part, again, I'm going to walk you through the whole process in this, uh, in this episode. The second thing we do here is we do KPIs or key performance indicators. So keep like, you know, new households. How many names did you source via introduction referral conversations, right? Uh, There's just some several things. How many financial plans did you execute this year? Uh, how many client events did you do? Which again, were probably mostly virtual, you know, assets. How many reviews did you source? Where are you versus capacity? So how many client slots do you have versus what we currently have in our book? You know, how many, how much more runway do we have? These are just examples. And it's like a scorecard, it's like keeping track, right? You want to do that. I think it's super, super important. So we'll have you do about maybe 10, you know, 12 to 15 bench uh, KPIs. What's interesting about this is when an advisor comes into this for the first time, they like freaked out. Like, oh my God. Look at all. And, and the key thing is not to do that. The key piece here is to say, hey, here's some things I need to know. Think of it like the pulse of your business. This is my pulse. This is how I determine how healthy my business is. So once you have that awareness, now you go into the new year, in this case, 2021, you'll now know what you need to keep track of. And when I say you, a lot of my clients will actually designate a member of their team who's probably a little bit more organized than they are to actually be the keep, the, we call it the keeper of the KPIs, okay? Then uh, part three, uh, there are 18 different benchmarks. We're not going to go over them uh, today, obviously, for time, but there are 18 success benchmarks. And while, what I'll have you do is rank yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on all 18, 
uh, why you gave yourself that score, and areas of improvement. One of the things that we want to emphasize in any new year are areas that we need to focus on to improve. So if our referral game's weak, we want to fix it. If our social media game's weak, we want to improve it. If our morning ritual slash day management stinks, we want to radically change that to get our hands around the business wheel. So that's all that happens first, right? So we do all that prior to any place. So that's step one, right? Then step two, we get into this. This is actually the 2021, literally, it just UPS just dropped this off a couple hours ago. And uh, this, is the, uh, this is the workbook we're going to use uh, for planning this year. And there are exactly 11 modules, right? I have to look to make sure because I know I added a couple things. And I'm not going to sit there and walk you through each one, like with every question and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you why we do what we do, all right? The first thing we do is we do what we call a mindset exercise. So it's, you know, we don't get into just, hey, let's get some numbers on a spreadsheet. Success in this business is 80% mindset, 20% mechanics. Guess what the average advisor focuses on? Mechanics. Yet it's only 20% of the equation. So if mindset's 80%, right? So in other words, you know, your bank account is uh, it equates to your psychology, your belief set your values, your rules, your self-image, your internal dialogue. So what we do in the first section, we have you construct kind of how it is today. What are the facts of your mindset? Then we ask a very important question. What does it need to be in order for you to achieve greatness? Because here's what I want you to all think about. Your mindset, your beliefs, what's important to you, your internal dialogue, right? Your self-image. That was just, you know, did you sit down one day when you're 15 or 14 or 12 or 7 years old or 22 years old and say, you know what, here's what it's going to be? No. What's happened is it's kind of been cobbled together in a haphazard manner, right, from uh, people who influenced you, mentors, parents, friends, family, uh, experiences, right? It's been kind of cobbled together in this kind of a slipshod way. And yet you've made money, yet you've done a good job doing what you do. Now, to achieve real greatness, what we need to do is we need to get the mindset in a place where we can radically improve it. And I know some of you sitting there go, Joe, is that even possible? Yet the answer is yes. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of advisors, and I'll tell you right now, every advisor who has achieved their goals in any years, it's not because they worked harder. Or found some secret sauce, they got their mind right, and then they execute it. So we literally spend like when we do our multi-day when we do our multi-day conference, we literally spend the first day just on mindset. We dig in because that to me is the key. Any coach, any consultant can help you put some things on a spreadsheet. Who cares? Whoop de do. It's not going to happen anyway. The next thing we're going to do. So after we do the mindset piece. Then I'm actually going to have you do goal setting, like like real get you know get the journal out, right? Write goals. Now what we do is we do a sunrise goal setting workshop. Um, so obviously with COVID this year, uh, we're going to record it. Uh, at, I'm going to go to the beach, record it, distribute it. But like our live events, we have every up at 6 a.m. Uh, we trudge out to the beach in Fort Lauderdale, and we sit and watch the sun come up. And I have them do a gratitude exercise. And then we write personal goals, business goals, economic goals, contribution goals, bucket lists, toys, fun. Like we spend literally 20, 30 minutes just writing goals and without any expectations. So here's the thing what most human beings do. They justify the goals. That's not what we do. What we do is we come up with goals and then we decide whether we're going to keep them or not. Right. So the next thing we're going to do, we do goal setting. And so after you do that morning exercise, then what I have you do and I'm going to I'm going to try to show it to you real quick. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole book because that's a little crazy. But here, you know, again, if you're not if you're doing the video piece, we'll have you break it down. Short term goals, twelve, to, you know, one to three year goals, more more strategic goals, three years plus, and we have you organize them in different categories. Now, are you going to work on all those goals in 2021? No. We're going to have you pick between three and five real top line goals, right? But we're going to have you. Go ahead and write that down. So that's part of the goal setting workshop. Next thing we do is, and this has been a shift for me, 
where we're going to take inventory of who you are and what you want to create. I've always believed that being a financial advisor is the ultimate lifestyle business. So if the word lifestyle is there, then we better figure out what that means. So I want to know how, you know, time away, bucket list trips, life integration with the business, your ultimate life. Where do you want to live? The kind of, you know, how do you want to spend your days? What's the ultimate vision for yourself or your family, your loved ones? And we want to get that all figured out because when we get that figured out, then we go, okay, well, here's what the business needs to look like to pull that off. And you know what's been very fast? And, and, and oh, by the way, the budget, right? So how much rev, how much profit? It's all about profits. How much profit do we drive to your family, to your household, to enable this to happen, right? And what's been very fascinating in watching advisors go through this work over, over decades is that most advisors are not that far away. You know, they're not looking to own a G6 and have the 135-foot yacht. Um, you know, normally, you know, good a good mid-six-figure uh, net uh, gets it done in most cases, right? But we figured out, we have, you know, again, if you have a spouse or a significant other, we have you get them involved in the process too. We really create something so now your business even has more meaning, your success has more meaning, which is ultimately what we want. So after we do that, so goal, we got, again, the mindset, the goal setting, ultimate life and lifestyle. Then now, okay, so that's like all the raw material. I want you to think about it that way. Then what we do is, okay, let's now, now let's organize this all, right? We've got goals. We've got all these ideas, thoughts, right? We, we did a goal setting workshop in, you know, at, at Sunrise. Now let's get it organized. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put together a five-year strategic module. Five years personally and professionally. And what we're going to have you do is work in terms of what we call outcomes, ranges, right? So, hey, I want my business to do between X and Y on the top line. I want to net between X and Y. Why do I say X and Y? Because there's so many variables in our business, right? We're going to have you put together a five-year org chart. Hey, what does my team need to look like in five years to pull this off? You know, most advisors... Uh, they operate, you know, their business is basically from the seat of the pants, right? Uh, usually in 30-day cycles, if we're lucky, 90-day cycles. Well, imagine kind of start roughing out, roughing out, right? Because, again, five years is a long way away. We start getting the mindset, hey, what do I want to create here? The more clarity you have, remember this, the more clarity you have, the easier it is to move forward toward your goals. And we want to do that, right? So I think that's super important that we get focused on that. After we do uh, the five-year, guess what we're going to do? We'll have you pick between three and five major outcomes slash deliverables. And that will become the top-line goals for 2021. And the way we work those goals, just so everybody's very, very clear. So if you say, let's say I have a goal between, I want to I have a top line between X and Y. Okay, that's the goal. Now, the next question I'm going to ask you about that goal inside the process is why is it an absolute must? Because if you don't have compelling reasons why something's an absolute must, do not put it on the board. All right, so the first thing is why. The next thing we do is what I like to call, you know, so I got the goal, the why, now is the how. We call, I call it the recipe. So, for example, I want to do between X and Y, you know, in 2021. Okay, great. Here's why. I'm bought in. Now, how are we going to get it done? Well, now we now it's a recipe. Well, how much new money do we need to bring in? How many clients do we need? Uh, you know, we, we, I, you know the ingredients, right? Those become what we call level two go, level two goals or ingredients, right? So top line, why, how, right? And then the last step, which is in my mind the most important step, is who do you need to become to pull this off? Because all economic evolution starts with self evolution. So let me repeat that. All economic evolution starts with personal evolution. And you know, it's a very fancy way to say, hey, your bank account is tied to your mindset. So who do you need to become to pull it off? I'll have you select between three and five top line. No more. You know, could you get most of the time you think about it, top line revenue, right? What's below that? You'll have a personal goal. What's below that? You may have something else. What's below that? So we only want to really have three to five top lines. And then every kind of everything else filters in between. So that's what we're going to do. I'll have you do three to five of those. Then we spend time. All right, so we got all the how. So how are we going to grow? So what's next? 
There are three components. And I'm going to give them to you in a very 50,000 foot view. Branding, marketing, and business development. Now, years ago, up until like literally last year, um, we would have this in one module. Marketing, branding, biz dev. And what I realized is there are three different disciplines. And let me explain the differences. Branding is what I call your collateral, your presence. So that's your website, that's your Facebook business, uh, that's your LinkedIn profile, uh, that's anything, you know, in terms of just how things look, you know, first impressions, your storefront, right? So the website, Facebook biz, 89% is going to be Facebook, uh, Facebook biz, website, LinkedIn profile. Some of you will play with Twitter, some of you will play with Instagram, but those are going to be the big three. They have to be uh, extraordinary. So they need to be top notch. Uh, if you haven't done a website refresh in probably 24 months or overdue, uh, you're never done. So the first thing we're going to do is have you set some branding goals. All right, we'll have you do that. Uh, the next thing we talk about marketing. Now marketing is your voice. So that's I call it outbound. What's your newsletter? What are you posting to LinkedIn, to Facebook? What's our video process like? What's our podcasting like? Like, what are we doing to get ourselves out there and make ourselves an expert, a person of authority? So our voice, right? We need to also, who are our target markets? So who are we looking to serve? Is it anybody with 50 bucks on a pulse? Or do we, are we really more thought out than that, right? So I've got branding and marketing. Then the third piece, biz dev or business development. Those will fall into a couple different what I call categories. Number one, uh, what is our referral and introductory strategy? What are our goals around that for 2021? What is our optimization strategy? So how do we get outside assets, financial planning, insurance? How do we how do we deepen the relationship with each with each one of our existing clients? Right. So I've got I've got so you're going to all have this one. You're going to have this one. The next thing is what is our game around leverage with our COIs, CPAs, attorneys, business coaches, whatever you consider that to be, right? Are we doing events this upcoming year, virtual to begin with and maybe live the latter part of the year? And then some of you will do other things like digital marketing, online seminars, uh, networking, and, and you'll account for all that, right? We'll get that all done. But ultimately, what you want to have is a well-thought-out plan. Now, why do we take all that? Because when we're done with all that, we now extrapolate it into what we call a two or three page quarterly game plan. So, you know, when some people see this and they go, oh, my gosh, it's like 80 some odd pages of the workbook, like, right. You're not going to read this every day. As much as I'd like you to, trust me, I would. Reality is you're not going to. So what we do, we come up with a, um, a two pager on um, that becomes what you review every morning. And that's what you go ahead and you establish your daily game plans with your morning rituals with and so on. So uh, like mine, for example, I'm just going to move some stuff around here because. I review mine every morning is this is like uh, this is page one, it's page two, and we have a little bit of page three here. So so I've got a two and a half pager basically uh, that I run my business with. My clients run the same, run their businesses off that off their version of the two to three pager. All right. So if you think about it, a well thought out business planning process contains the following. That will get you out of here when it keeps 20 minutes. So number one is you want to record what you did this upcoming, you know, this current year, right? The good, the bad, the narratives, the KPIs, the benchmarks. You always want to memorialize your successes and failures. They're a great learning tool. Then we're going to have you figure out your mindset. Then we have you do some goals. Then we have you do a five-year window, right? A five-year snapshot. Then we get down to a one-year snapshot. Uh, then we get you to work on marketing, branding, biz dev. And then we break it down into a 90-day snapshot. And then inside of that 90-day snapshot, I think it's in here. Hopefully it is, right? I just, I just said it is. Oh, we do have the quarterly game plan here. Very cool. So then the last thing you'll do is that, which is your daily, which is your daily game plan, one pager. So think of it like a, like a framework to go ahead and be excellent each and every day. So if you think about it, we take you, we take you from a five-year vision plus down to what you've got to do in each and every day and everything in between. That is the difference between a well-thought-out strategic planning process and just dumping some stuff on a spreadsheet or a one page business plan, which, you know, which is which is sounds nice in theory. And trust me, I've been trying to invite, you know, to invent one that's meaningful. A, our, my planning process is a vehicle of change and evolution. It's not just a it's not just a process of clarity. Right? Clarity is cool. You need that. But you've got to make sure you understand it's about change 
and elevation also. So hopefully this made sense to you. Then again, I just want to give you the, the landscape of a proper planning process, how I like to do planning. Again, it's my 19th year doing it. If you have any questions, there's some links below. You can go check that out. And thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. So there you have it. If you really enjoyed watching this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the Magellan Network Show with Coach Joe here on YouTube. And remember, I'm always here to help you become a better entrepreneur, business owner, and financial advisor. With that, I'll see you next time on the Magellan Network Show with me, Coach Joe. Take care and goodbye.